Let's talk about filters. It turns out you already know what a filter is. Think about a water filter, right? You want to keep the water and you want to filter out whatever else is in that water. It's the same with our signal filters. We want to keep the part of the signal we care about and we want to get rid of everything else. Let's think about that water filter analogy a little bit more. So in a water filter, you could filter particles out based on particle size, right? So your bigger particles from dirt or what have you get filtered out, and your smaller particles, which are the water, make it through the filter. Well, it's similar in our signal filters, except for here we're going to filter based on signal frequency. All right, and hopefully after last time when we talked about the FFT, you're starting to get some idea of how we can build up our more complicated signals like we've seen maybe from the accelerometer from these individual frequency components. So here's the plot that you should have in your head whenever you're thinking about low pass filters, right? This is for a low pass filter here. And a low pass filter is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to allow low frequencies to pass through while cutting off or attenuating high frequencies. And we'll see how this shows up on this plot in a minute. But first I just want to walk you through this graph here, and I've uh, left off some of the details on these axes here. You can take a look at the class notes to figure out what's going on with that. But this is the most important part. So again, this is a low pass filter. Here at low frequencies, you can see we have a gain of about one. And the way we figure this out is our output amplitude, so our output sine wave, if we pass a sine wave in, is going to be equal to a gain times the input amplitude. So here at low frequencies, because our gain is one, our output amplitude just equals our input amplitude. Then we get up to a point and it's flat, we're reasonably flat for a while, and then we come to one of the most important points on this plot, which is the cutoff or corner frequency, which I've shown by this vertical line here. Now at the cutoff frequency, that's right around where it starts to, the plot starts to slope off more significantly. But what's important is that it actually is slightly attenuated, that is the gain is somewhat less than one here. So that's significant because if you want to maintain all of the amplitude of a particular signal, you have to make sure that your corner frequency is a little bit above that signal. But we'll see that in a minute. Now after the corner frequency, the gain starts sloping off more and more so that our high frequencies are getting cut, out, cut down in amplitude. So let's say we had a gain of 0.1 and we had an input amplitude of 1, then our output amplitude would just be 0.1. Let me show you another picture that helps me think about what a low pass filter does. And you can figure out the details for a high pass filter, which we also talk about. But basically, it's just this plot here flipped around so that the lower frequencies are getting cut off and the higher frequencies have a gain of around one. So now, in this picture, the way I think about it, I have a bunch of input sine waves with the same amplitude but different frequencies down here. And I want to know what happens to those waves when they go through my low pass filter. So these images are kind of what you could think about, like this is what you would see on your oscilloscope, right? If you were to measure the input with your oscilloscope and also measure the output, this is what would happen. If you had a low frequency wave that you put in, this lives kind of down here on our plot. So it's going to have a gain of about one and the output will be about the same magnitude as the input. Around the corner frequency, the output will be slightly attenuated. So this output magnitude is a little bit less than the input magnitude. And in much higher frequencies, the output will be significantly attenuated, meaning that our magnitude will be much less than the input magnitude. Maybe at this point, this all still seems a little bit abstract and uh, not all that useful, right? We got a bunch of sine waves, and we got some big sine waves and small sine waves, but what do we actually want to use these filters for? Well, to answer that, let's go back and look at our C car example one more time. You remember we talked about how what we really want to do is find the real accelerations on the car that are causing it to either turn or accelerate forward. But what we have is all this extra noise on here from vibrations and perhaps electrical noise on the signal. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to get rid of as much of this scatter here as possible and try to clean up this plot. And I'm going to show you how a filter will help me do just that. So the only question we have to ask ourselves right now to design this filter is where do we want the cutoff frequency to be? And there's a bit more to it, but we're just going to go through this as a simplified example. So what we want to have happen is we want our actual accelerations that we care about to not be cut off, but we want all that noise to be over on this side of the cutoff frequency, and we want that to be attenuated as much as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to think about how to actually pick this cutoff frequency. 
So remember we generated this data when we were talking about the FFT? So this was the data that I collected while the RC car was sitting on a box. So we think we want to get rid of all of this from our final signal, right? And it turns out our FFT can help us set our corner frequency because we've got these peaks down here and this is telling us what kind of frequencies show up in this signal which we want to get rid of. So our lowest frequency was around 30 hertz. So I'm thinking that's going to be our target for what we want to get rid of. All right, so I want to get rid of 30 hertz, and I'm looking at now my acceleration from the car, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball it at this point and say that I want to keep something around 0.5 hertz to 1 hertz. And again, I just kind of looked at this. You could come up with an experiment and do maybe another fast Fourier transform to figure it out. But that's what I'm saying is I want to keep 0.5 hertz to 1 hertz. So I'm not going to really explain how I picked this cutoff frequency, but I'll give you a hint that if you look at the equation for the gain at different frequencies, that's how I came up with this number. I'm going with a cutoff frequency of 3 Hz to try to keep my 0.5 Hz signal and cut off the 30 Hz. The next thing I needed to do was to pick the resistor size and capacitor size that I needed to get the cutoff frequency that I wanted. So typically what I'll do is this, I'll figure out what capacitors I have sitting around and then I'll design my resistor based on that. So I had a 0.1 microfarad capacitor sitting around, so I found out that I needed about 500 kilo ohms of resistance. But because we didn't have that in the lab, I just took two 1 mega ohm resistors and put them together in parallel to give me about the same value. Here's my low pass filter actually built on the breadboard. I've got the accelerometer up here and that's providing V in right here where it says X out. Then that goes through, I have two resistors, but they're the equivalent of one 500 kilo ohm resistor here. Here's my common node in the schematic and it's this short bus here on the breadboard. So I'm measuring that common node as well. That's gonna be my V out. And that's all going to be relative to ground, which is down on this strip here. And you can see my capacitor goes from ground to the common node, just like it does in the schematic. So I headed back outside, and here's the new data that I recorded. You can see up top here we have the raw or unfiltered data. And you can see it's very noisy like it was before. But down here I have the data after it passed through my filter. And you can see how it looks much smoother than the data that we had before, especially out here if you compare these peaks to what you see up top, it's much more clear how the car is actually accelerating now that we've gotten rid of most of what we had before. And you can see that this data still isn't perfect. We've got some points here where there's still some noise in there, but it's been greatly reduced from what we had before.